So uh, we had a ton of people in the last like day or two register for this session. And um, we are doing a coaching session with me um, and other inspectors. And the idea is to talk about your business and um, have a discussion about your problems, if you are having any, if you have any questions. Um, I'm here for some uh, guidance and to give you some advice. The issue is um, in the last two days, we had about uh, 30 people register. So um, we have an issue. I can't turn on everyone's microphone because if 50 people, we had 50 something, 55 people, um, if, if we all start talking, um, we're gonna uh, be unable to hear each other. So what I'm going to do is um, offer everyone um, who wants a smaller session um, that opportunity um, later this week or next week. Um, so just email me if you'd like and you want to be in a smaller group so that I can um, turn on everyone's microphone and we can see each other face to face. If I do that right now, 50 people are gonna pop up and we'll all have our microphones hot and nothing will get done. So let's, um, let's maybe uh, get together again in a smaller coaching session where I can see you and you can see me and I can hear your voice and we can talk uh, in a small group, no more than like a dozen people. So if that's of interest to you, um, email me, ben at internachi.org, ben at internachi.org, and I'll send you a link uh, for a smaller group. So for this size of a group, I didn't think it would be so popular, but I guess it is. So for this size of a group, I want you to ask questions. So if you have uh, something to discuss, some questions to ask about your business, you click the uh, little QA button or question answer button and uh, type in your questions and I can see them pop up and we'll go over your questions and we'll talk about business. We'll talk about anything you want from home inspection, uh, technical training questions to um, business resources, marketing strategies, um, advice, uh, inspection software, marketing, um, how to get more business, how to make more money, profit, anything you want. Um, tools, um, where to go for tools, what does InterNACHI offer, any kind of topic. That's what a coaching session and a mentoring session is all about. Um, addressing what you need so we can help each other out. But the issue is uh, in the past two days, like 30 some inspectors uh, registered. So this, this session is too big to turn on everyone's microphone. So if you've got a question or you wanna talk about a particular topic or you wanna ask me a question, um, feel free to type in your question using that little chat um, area and I'll try to get to everybody. But I was thinking about, and also if you want a smaller group, if you wanna do this again, but in a smaller group and see each other face to face and talk uh, like in a small uh, meeting um, with your microphone on and your webcam on, that'd be fine. Um, just email me, ben at internachi.org, ben at internachi.org, and we can do this again. So I was thinking about, uh, I wrote down some notes for our coaching session just to get the ball rolling. And I was thinking that there's a few ways to make more money in your business. And um, there's only a few ways to make money in the home inspection business. Um, one of them is to, well, you increase revenue and you lower costs. That's what every business does. Let's not talk about lowering costs. Although lowering costs in your business is really important and InterNACHI can help you because InterNACHI has a ton of free stuff, right? Like the masterclass that's on the screen here. This is the masterclass. This provides you everything that you need to run a successful home inspection business. It goes over the technical training as well, advanced training, how to perform a home inspection. In the class, we go over every system. You inspect every system. You have assignments and homework and coaching sessions with me and other mentors. Uh, and that's free and online for members. InterNACHI helps keep your money in your pocket. So you can be a member of InterNACHI for a low monthly fee. 
You can be trained to become the best home inspector in the world. All of our classes are online and free for members. You can take advantage of all the membership benefits and all the benefits are free. And there's a huge membership benefits list. You can um, become trained and certified in other types of inspections. So internet she trains and certifies obviously home inspectors, but there are other types of inspections that you should be doing. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. And all of those additional training programs are free and online. We have business resources like documents and an online agreement system and a cloud-based reporting software where you can do your checklist if you wanted to and then upload it into the cloud and then send that report to anyone by email with a link. We have marketing sources, marketing resources. We have an, um, a team of marketing professionals who really, we don't do marketing for InterNACHI, we do marketing for you. So we all work for you. And you have a team of marketing professionals to take advantage of. And we've got mentoring and we have online classes and coaching sessions like this one. So to reduce cost, become a member of InterNACHI and keep your money in your pocket. There are ways to make more money. There's only a few ways. So if you've got a pencil and paper, this is one of the good things you could do. Write a few notes down. This morning I, I took a, an hour. Just about every morning this is a good uh, opportunity for you as a business owner. Take an hour every morning and learn something new. Maybe write something down. I'm old school, so I get my pen. <laughs> it's one of these cheap ones and paper. I got my paper here and I got notes and write down what you're going to do for your business. For me, it was writing notes down about what I wanted to tell you today. So there's a few ways to make money. One of them is to increase the number of clients that you have. And you do that through marketing. You can increase your prices. You, you can do that by overwhelming your clients with value. You can increase the amount of money you make per client. And you do that by getting certified in other types of inspections and then bundling those inspection services. And you can increase the number of prices, um, increase the number of inspections that you do. Just do more inspections. And you do that with uh, being efficient with your time, time management. You can hire more inspectors too. And that takes marketing because you not only have to fill your calendar, you have to have it overflowing so you can hire more inspectors. And you have to learn about delegating too. And then you can increase the number of inspections that each client hires you for, right? So it may be in a five year span, maybe in a one year span, your client might hire you again, right? And that takes, um, that's called frequency. And that takes keeping in touch with your past clients. And that's the few ways you can make more money. Every way that you can make more money, internet has resources. So take advantage of all the resources that InterNACHI provides. They're all free and online in order to be successful in your business. So for example, I wrote down some math. Let's say last month I did 10 inspections. You can write this down, 10 inspections, and I, I charged $300 per inspection. 10 times 300 is what? How much did I make gross revenue? That's 3,000 bucks. Let's say I can increase by taking advantage of all the resources that InterNACHI has. I can increase the number of inspections that I do next month by 10%. So if I did 10 last month, increase it by 10%. That's 11. Okay. If I increase, if I can figure out how to increase my inspection fee just by a little bit, 10%, and I charged 300 last month, but this month I found out how to increase my inspection fee by 10%. That's $330. So what's that? What's 11 times 330? That's 3,630. Let's say that's a pretty good increase actually, right? 
from one month to the next, from $3,000 to 3,600 essentially. That's pretty good. I'd rather, I'd like to make an extra $630. Yeah. Now think about increasing the number of inspections, keeping that at 11. And then you increase the amount per client. Let's say you bundle um, two inspections. So I'm not just doing a home inspection for 300 or 330 with that 10% increase. Now I'm doing it for 425. So what's 11 times 425? Well, that's 4,675 if you don't have a calculator. So you went from $3,000 a month. Now you're making almost 4,700. Just by increasing the number of inspections that you do by 10%, bundling your inspection services. That was one of the ways to increase revenue, right? Now, what about frequency? What if you have an opportunity to sell each client an additional inspection? So you do a home inspection and a rate on test for $425, let's say. But let's say later that year, or maybe if you span it out and you, you go for a five-year period, you have an opportunity to sell each client another inspection, but not everyone. Maybe it's just a, a chance, maybe a probability, like a 10% probability. So that's another factor. So now you're doing 11 inspections a month times 425 times 1.1. That's frequency. You're not just doing one inspection for every client, but you're doing you have a chance to do more than one inspection per client. Do that calculation. Okay, so the, the, you'll see a huge difference. So the idea of how do you make more money is really about math and about um, knowing how to increase just a little bit every part of your business to lower costs, taking advantage of InterNACHI's resources, and understanding how to increase things. One of them is being trained and certified in multiple inspections. So you can offer more to your client, offer more value to your client. And keep in touch with your clients so that you can be hired again. If one out of 10 clients hires me again, that's, that's a factor that I add in my math equation. It's not just one inspection per client and then I say goodbye, they're my neighbor. I keep in contact with them. What could I do? Maybe a roof inspection. Maybe offer a roof inspection. Who knows what that home maintenance inspection? It's gotta be something. You can give it a try. Let's say you, you just keep it at one, the frequency is one. Certainly you can figure out how to increase your fee by 10% or maybe even more by bundling inspection services. You can certainly figure out how to increase the number of inspections that you do by 10%. So I, I wrote down a few more notes also. Roger asks, when's the House of Horrors opening up? Uh, we have two, we have one in Florida and one in um, Boulder. And uh, it's up to the virus, what it wants to do, right? So we don't wanna open anything up until everyone is absolutely safe and healthy and we can provide that opportunity. So in the meantime, we're going virtual. So we have plans to take the House of Horrors online have some instructors go through it with a live interactive class from the House of Horrors in Colorado and in Florida. Jamie asks, is it worth to wear a body cam and would you just keep the videos for your use? Yeah, body cams are really important nowadays, right? Body cams, no one knew what a body cam was until recently. 
So there are a ton of body cam uh, vendors out there. Um, you can find one from inspectoroutlet.com. Inspectoroutlet.com has a body cam and provides a discount for InterNACHI members from the drop down. And I love it. So I know home inspection companies that uh, film body cams videos, they do the whole thing and then they provide that video to their clients. And you could do that. And a lot of people um, just do, I used to just do uh, videos off of my phone, off of every system. So I do a short video, 10 or 30 second video on every system using my phone and upload that into my report. Now the videos are integrated into your inspection report. Body cam, same thing, it's a, but it's the entire inspection. I'm not sure if anyone is going to watch that whole thing, right? It's more of a CYA type of resource, but body cams are easy, easy to do. I'm wearing one essentially right now. There isn't a camera, it's a microphone and it's a wireless microphone. So a lot of inspectors are buying these as well, what's on my shirt right now. There's no wire, it's just hooked up and you could hook it up to your phone if you wanted to do a really good um, selfie video, right, for your blog. Eric says he loves the masterclass. His biggest issue is getting to realtors, especially during these times, what would you recommend? All right, so I would talk with your existing clients if you don't have any clients, you're gonna build some. But talk with your existing clients and ask them for referrals. And ask them about their agents. They always remember their agents. Was it a good experience or a bad experience? And through them, reconnect with their agent or agents. That's one way to get in contact with a person who you've already gained their trust your past client, and a way to connect by using their, their degree of separation, one degree of separate, their name, your past client's name, to their agent or their office. Um, and then ask each one for referrals. And we have training on how to do that as well. We have training on how to talk to a real estate agent. It's very easy. Um, so talk to your existing clients and talk to them about um, your business is still open and they would like, you would like a referral if you have anybody who needs an inspection or a home maintenance inspection, inspection or a free inspection, maybe practice. If you, if, you don't, if you haven't scheduled a home inspection yet, right? But you wanna produce some content, but not on your own home. This is a good idea. I do inspections in my neighborhood for my neighbors. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, follow the COVID safety guidelines. And network with highly successful professionals like other home inspectors who are successful through InterNACHI's uh, channels, right? Through our forum, watch our webinars of other successful home inspectors and listen to our podcast. Join a local real estate association. So I Googled um, this morning um, a Boulder Realtor Association. Just Google Boulder Realtor Association or your city and look what popped up. So here's my, I live in Boulder, Colorado and Boulder Area Realtor Association. And I've got all these pages of realtors. I got their name, their company, a link to their company, their address, mailing address, their phone number, their fax number, fax, and uh, how to connect with them in the community. It's fantastic. And there's pages of them. Uh, I also went to LinkedIn. I don't really hang out on LinkedIn, but it's a good way to connect. So what do I have? I have uh, 4,651 connections, but type in the search, real estate agent. Oh, real estate agent um, in Boulder. See what pops up, a thousand results. There's Shauna Craig, there's Ashley Stringer, there's a LinkedIn member from Brick and Boulder Real Estate, Andrew, on and on, and you just connect. Now don't 
use the template that LinkedIn has, say something original to hook up, right? Here's something, here's an idea. What do you say to a real estate agent through LinkedIn? Tell them that you're gonna do a Zoom meeting on what really matters during the home inspection. And it's a five minute Zoom meeting and here's the link, right? And it helps them with their business. And you narrow it down. You could even text them a little bit. You can give them a little clue about what, the, what really matters during the home inspection. There's four things, major defects, things that lead to major defects, things that may hinder the ability to finance, and safety hazard. And this can be used in a Zoom meeting. Do a Zoom meeting. Tell an agent, hey, I'm doing a Zoom meeting at 12 o'clock. Love you to be there. Don't have to talk. Just listen in. It's five minutes. I'm going to tell you about what really matters in the home. And we have that essentially resource, that script. Uh, start booking yourself for trade shows, but not as they're coming up next year probably, but not as um, a person standing behind your table because no one has anything to say to you. So book yourself as a presenter and present something like what really matters and maybe expand on that idea. What really matters in a home inspection? Tips for real estate agents. And then book yourself as a presenter or a speaker. And so when people come by your table, they have something to say like, hey, that was a really good presentation. Write an article for a local newspaper, like mine would be the Boulder newspaper, and write it on home maintenance articles. Write a home maintenance uh, guide or tips for home maintenance. And we have resources. Well, you can be certified as an annual home maintenance inspector. But we also have like seasonal checklists, homeowner's guide by being energy efficient, safety guidelines for home pools. You can write a ton of articles for a local newspaper. Send a valuable message, a message with something of value that's short and sweet, about 50 words, maybe even less. Write it on a blog, on your website, share it all over the place. On LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Be an expert on something. Share something of value. Do selfie videos of your inspections. You don't have to scare people with crazy stuff that are hazardous or something like that. Home maintenance tips. How to maintain your home. A lot of people, a lot of your clients have no idea how a home works, how to maintain it, or how to save energy. Share those tips with your clients or potential clients and reconnect with your past clients. That's the frequency. Keep reconnecting with your past clients. Well, they become an unpaid sales force for you. Plus, they may hire you again may hire you to do a, a home maintenance checkup inspection. It's like gold in your backyard. You have to keep mining that and strengthen that pipeline. And you gotta learn how to provide value to your clients. That's the only way you're gonna be able to increase your inspection fee. You have to provide value. If you think what you're providing is valuable and your client doesn't think it's valuable, then it's not valuable. So you have to figure out what is valuable to your clients. So you can explain, if you could explain to me how you help your clients, you're on the right track of figuring out the actual value for your inspection service. How does your client win by hiring you? How do you serve your clients in the terms that they understand? Not from what you can do. How does it benefit someone else? Like I used to have the idea that I'm providing value because I do a good inspection. I do a great inspection. I write very long inspection reports, right? That's from the perspective of me. What about the perspective from my client? That's the value you need to provide and explain. Can you explain to me why you're valuable to homeowners? Why well, check out a house to make sure there are no big problems before you buy it.
That's pretty good. That's a good first sentence. Now you're getting some. I help each of my clients find, on average, $8,000 of house problems before they buy their new house. 8,000 bucks. Yeah, on average, like what's a typical summary sheet for a home inspection report? How much, how many problems in dollar value do you find on a typical average ins inspection? For me, it's, it's in thousands of dollars. So they could save that money. A lot of people aren't really interested in hiring you to, to save money. They're interested in something else, right? How about I help each of my clients save on average $2,000 every year on their home utility bills. Hmm, interesting. So we have a home energy report system where you can go in and make recommendations. You're doing a home inspection, but you can do a home energy report without adding any time. And it gives you recommendations on how to save money. And the typical report recommends about $2,000 every year. $2,000 every year by following your recommendations, like adding insulation and air sealing. That's pretty good, 2,000 bucks every year. That's like a little weekend vacation there, right, for a family. Um, I, I inspect every little thing in your house before they become big problems. I kind of like that. Remember, your client isn't coming to you because they need to hire a home inspector. They're coming to you because they're about to buy a home and they don't know anything, what, they don't know what anything is. They don't know how anything works. They don't know how to maintain anything. And they don't know what a small problem looks like before they become a big problem. That is why they're hiring you not because you do a good inspection and you write a lot of reports with pictures. Don't mean to pick on anybody, but that's exactly what I used to say. I write, I, I do good inspection. I, I show up on time too. Uh, who doesn't? So you have to distinguish yourself. We all write inspection reports. We all perform a home inspection according to the same standards of practice. What is going to distinguish you from me? other than price, because if you and I are in the same market and we're gonna compete on price, we're just gonna kill each other. Everyone loses. So Eric, there's a few ways to connect with real estate agents. LinkedIn is one of the cool ones, I would say. There's a lot of real estate agents on LinkedIn. Not sure why. What's the, um, Hafiz? What's the cost of a personalized home maintenance book and what's the value of, of offering that? The cost of a customized, personalized home maintenance book for your inspection company is the same cost. It's $2.70. I think there's a minimum fee. There's a minimum amount, sorry, that you have to order. I can't remember what it is. It's 500 books maybe um, and it's $2.70. The lower amount, the higher it is, right? Because it costs the printer to print a short batch that's unique. But if you order like a thousand books, right? That's $2,700. Hmm. That's a big cost. But if you're doing hundreds of inspections, 200 inspections, 300 inspections every year, yeah, you'll be running out in just a couple years. So a few years. But it's, it's $2.70 to customize a home maintenance book. I don't have one with me. But InterNACHI has a, we have three home maintenance books. One for Florida, it's specific to Florida. You won't find any um, how to uh, maintain a boiler or a, a basement in the ho a Florida home maintenance book. Um, we have a, a general one um, that has all the systems and components. Um, and that's $2.70 each. And then there's one in Spanish as well. Why would I give a client um, a home maintenance book. Well, there's a chance that they might put it on their shelf and think about you when they need to home, uh, maintain their home. I would use it to help sell my services to add value to my service. 
to help me distinguish from all the rest. A lot of home inspectors will use a home maintenance book and just add it at the very end. They'll just throw it in at the end of the inspection. Oh yeah, here's my report and here, here's a home maintenance book. Bye. That's not, the, that's not the reason why I would use a home maintenance book. I'd put the home maintenance book on my marketing. A free home maintenance book, 100 pages, full color, customized cover, color inside and out to help you maintain the home. And within the home maintenance book, there are 12 reasons to hire you again. That's that thing about frequency, right? You want to increase the frequency, the number of inspections per client, just at least by a little bit. So I would use it as a, a pre-sell, as a reason to hire me because I give a home maintenance book to every client. And I would put that in my marketing. I wouldn't keep it a secret and give it to my clients who already paid me at the end of the inspection on my way out the door. That's a waste. Second thing is, it's $2.70 each. That's a lot of money. Why would I, why would I increase my overhead by three bucks? Well, don't. Don't increase your overhead by three bucks. Increase your fee. Increase your fee by five bucks per inspection and allow your client to buy their own home maintenance book and a cup of coffee for you. Just increase your fee. That is the whole goal, to keep working on increasing, keeping your prices up by providing overwhelming value. So that, and this is maybe one of the pieces, the home maintenance book. That's why, what is the value of offering that? It's a lot more than $2.70 if you do it right. It looks, oh, I get a whole book. Oh, give it a try. Buy a case, case of 50, 40 books, and start to market it before you're hired, right? Don't just throw it on as icing on the cake. It's kind of like a waste. Marketing is everything before the transaction. Customizing it, you don't have to. If you want to buy just a case of books and see how it works, I would do that. There's a hundred things, or I was going to say a thousand. There's probably a thousand things you could try. You want to try the things that are free and things that make sense. And you don't want to add overhead, if at all possible. So don't add overhead. I would increase my fee, five bucks. That's what I did way back when, when I was a home inspector for a dozen years in Pennsylvania. Home maintenance book, I think I bought them for $4.50, but I had to increase my fee. Nobody knew, right? I don't, don't, didn't have a ton of repeat clients who saw that I, oh, I increased my fee this year by $5. Just my agents. So I had to explain to my agents, and most of my agents were so busy, they didn't even mention the extra five bucks. That's the value. All right, thanks. Oh, I should be, uh, there we go. So if you're looking at the question things, right, I'm uh, clicking them off. You should do a wind mitigation class, a live class. Okay. No, we do them or we did them before COVID, right? Before COVID, we did live classes down in Florida at our House of Horrors, wind mitigation. They're popular. We had structural engineers with our instructors. We have, uh, we have mock-up straps. You know, you know, down in, in Florida in particular and along the coast of the United States, and it's more and more now, storms are getting bigger. Um, roofs blow off, right, along the coast. So it's really important to strap things down. And uh, that's what the wind mitigation uh, course is all about. And we do live classes. So, what we're going to try to do um, until we can open up things for everyone safely so everyone feels okay to come to live class and have great food during class and take breaks and shake hands and things like that, um, we're gonna go virtual and online. So thanks, John. Um, if you wanna know when the next class is, well, 
I'd subscribe to the InterNACHI newsletter. There's two every month that comes out and nothing is repeated. So we fill up each newsletter with only two weeks of information, the past two weeks. That's how much things are changing and going on. So I recommend subscribing to the newsletter and scroll through it and pick out, you don't have to read everything, just pick out whatever pops up of interest for you. Look for a live class or win mitigation class or something like that. Saying, my biggest huddle is the inspection time. I inspected a 2,000 square foot home yesterday. It took me almost five hours. What is my average time? What, uh, oh, that is my average time for the same size house. What should I do to reduce the time to three hours? Yeah, nobody wants to, uh, nobody wants to spend five hours on a home inspection. The home inspector doesn't, and, <laughs> and the homeowner doesn't want to open up their house for over five hours. The real estate agents, the, nobody wants to do a five hour home inspection. And I bet you spent some time even after that to tweak your report before you sent it out at night, right? So my entire life changed as a business owner and an inspector when I wrote my inspection reports as I inspected. It's a skill. You have the ability to write reports, right? Tick, 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 tick. Um, and you know what to do with the software but it takes time. You put those two things together, ability and knowledge, you get a skill. And it takes time to develop a skill. So I would practice on your house with mobile software. Software that allows you to write inspection reports as you inspect. So that when I'm done with the inspection, I'm done with the inspection. I click a button and my client immediately gets the summary and or the ent uh, entire report. For example, I like to go to the inspection early and I do the roof or the exterior or both before my client even shows up. And I go up on the roof. That's another distinguishing factor. I'm different from all the rest because I ca carry tall ladders and I get up on the roof. I was a home builder and a roofer and I'm okay. Don't, don't, you're not required to go up on a roof. But if you were competing with me in the same market saying, um, I would market the heck out of me bringing tall ladders and getting up on the roof, taking pictures from the roof. So I inspect the roof first. Before I step on my ladder to get back down and shake my client's hand, if we can get back to that, um, I'm done inspecting, taking pictures, taking video, and writing the report for that section. I'm done with that section. And then I do the exterior. I walk around maybe with my client maybe a quick run around or I scoot them inside because they just want to go inside anyways. And I do my exterior inspection, maybe passing once just to look around and get the big ideas. And then a second time, it's only 15 minutes, 15 minutes on the roof, 15 minutes on the exterior, taking pictures, doing videos of major defects or things that my client may want to see that they haven't seen uh, with me because they're not with me. And then, I write the report and it's on my, it's on my phone. The software is on my phone. I write the report and then I'm done. Now I've done the roof, the exterior in about 30 minutes. First impression, shake hands with my client. My client's inside waiting for me. And I've got several more systems to go. Only a half hour in and I'm early. So I arrive about 15 minutes early. Now I'm only 50, if, I, if the inspection starts at eight o'clock, I arrive 15 minutes early. I tell my, I inform the homeowner or the occupant or the tenant that I'll be there early. You don't have to open up because I'm gonna do the roof and the exterior. And then all the agents come and everyone comes, the family members come in and around and they're all mingling around the, um, the, the front door or the driveway or something like that. And then we eventually all go in, right? or maybe I'm still doing the exterior, but I get there early. I have an eight o'clock and a 12 o'clock. Yeah, eight o'clock and 12 o'clock. I do two inspections every day. I did that for a dozen years, two inspections, one at eight, one at 12. And I ate lunch in between because I used a mobile device and I wrote my report as I inspected. And as I inspected every system, 
bam, that's done in the report. So that when I'm done with the last system, which is for me, not doesn't necessarily be for you, I ended up in the kitchen. That was my last system. So when I ended up in the kitchen, because the kitchen is like the nice place to end an inspection. You know, make sure you get paid, everything's signed and everything's good and shaking hands and, you know, bundle all your things and, you know. And then uh, I'm done. When I'm done with the dishwasher, I'm done with the entire report. I click a button for the summary, click a button for the whole report. I may scan through it. I may add a, another video or some additional inf information, but I'm done. Around 11 o'clock. That was a three-hour inspection. I get in my truck, drive to the next job on the way. I, I bring my lunch. I don't stop for lunch. Maybe if I need to treat myself, I will for coffee and a donut or something like that. But, you know, it's cost effective and time management, time efficient to bring your own lunch as you drive. New shirt. I prep my software for the next one. I take a look at my schedule, maybe do some emails, maybe a phone call check in with the office, or maybe I'm the office, so I'm making sure everything's managed well. And I'm ready for my next job. I'm there early. I'm parked outside. Don't park in the driveway either. That's for my clients. I park on the curb, on the street, or a little bit away. And I could do my next job in three hours. I'm home before four, maybe 4.30. 8, 7.30, 7, 7, you know, it's a long day maybe seven o'clock to five o'clock. But I'm my own boss. Long day, two jobs, make about $1,000 a day. About 500 per job, 560 it was per job. If you make a thousand bucks a day, gross revenue, you're doing really well. No, you can't do that if you're doing a five hour home inspection. The only the best advice I can give you is you have to learn how to manage your time and be efficient. I'm not talking about running through the home and skipping stuff and blowing through it and not being thorough. I'm just being talking about being good with your time management. And so a mobile device is the best. It speeds up your time, your total time, makes you more efficient. You can actually inspect better because you have essentially a checklist process in your hand. You don't look stupid. You can write notes. You know what you're doing. You know, there's 14 requirements according to code. We're not code inspectors, but there's 14 requirements for the discharge pipe on a TPR valve. How am I supposed to remember that, right? Especially when under pressure or during the home inspection. We can just, you know, write notes. If something looks funky, you can always refer to your notes and it's right there. So yeah, find software. Where do you find software? Internachi has an e-commerce partner. It's a tool store, essentially, called inspectoroutlet.com. Um, John. What should you do if your client hires you to do an inspection on a home that they just built and the builder says they don't accept home inspector reports? I'm not writing a report for you, builder, right? So it's really up to my client to somehow allow a friend to come in and take a look around. Now, I love beating up builders who, uh, who have like a 50 foot dryer vent with a ton of 90s, right? And so they put a big booster fan on it. <laughs> so a little bit of research on that. That's always, you know, these big mansion homes being built. The, the dryer, you know, they put it right in the middle of the home and then, or the, down in the basement, they try to shoot it all the way out. So that's, that's a fun thing to beat up on a, on a new home. Um, Sometimes a, a new home will have um, the shingles installed and they're not hot yet. They're, they haven't melted yet. They haven't adhered to each other yet. And so it'll blow, it'll blow off. You'll get some cracked shingles, even if they're laminated, heavy shingles. Yeah. Sometimes the, the uh, contractors aren't communicating with each other. So the siding contractor and the roofing contractor 
um, they got to get together. They can't, they can't be off on one another. So it's oftentimes I'll find flashing that is just uh, missing or not installed properly. Um, sometimes in a new home, they'll be missing insulation, like totally missing. This is very rare, one out of a thousand, but it's kind of fun. Um, sometimes the appliances are not installed and someone needs in a brand new home and someone needs to uh, document that for the buyer, your client, and the builder um, uses that as a checklist, right? They're all angry or there's a scratch. Uh, I've done uh, not home inspections, but walkthrough inspections. And I've documented for my client the little things and we put little um, blue stickers on little scratches on doors and things. And then I take a picture of it and that's a totally different home inspection template but that's a $350 inspection. Building, um, builders just love me. Um, so I'm not writing their inspection report for the builder. Um, it's usually the supervisor of the, of the company that comes through and um, get ready to talk about code too, or standards. If you're gonna talk about grading, um, pipe materials, uh, I'll sometimes spam, I'll pull out my measuring tape and measure the span of the floor just to um, fool around with the, the building supervisor. Um, but I'm not an engineer. So I, I stick with the code, um, stick with the standards of practice, do a home inspection, but to get into a brand new home, I've never really had any problems. Um, I kind of just make myself as like a family member if there is a restriction. And if they don't accept home inspection reports, that's okay. I'm not writing it for them. I'm writing for the person who's paying me. I hope that's what you, what you meant. Would you be willing to review and critique my inspection report? Mm. You know, if I say yes, I'm gonna get a hundred reports. So I can't, right? Um, but we do have training classes on how to write inspection report and the characteristics of a report. And the three, for example, the three functions of a report narrative. So a report narrative is basically the, um, what you write that describes your observation and you write in the past tense. So that's a tip for your inspection report. You have to write in the past tense. We're, we recommend that you write in the past tense. And there are many benefits for you writing in the past tense. For example, I observed blank defect during my home inspection. I observed, right? If you say things like, um, the roof is in good shape, and you put that in the report and document it, if you get in the court over that inspection, the attorney now has something to um, use against you because you are claiming that the roof is in good shape, but we're in this courtroom because the roof is actively leaking. It leaks every time it rains. So why did you say that it's in good shape while my client has buckets of water underneath the roof, right? Catching roof leaks. So you wanna write in the past tense and it forces anyone reading the report on any day after the inspection to say things like, during my inspection, I observed no indications of this, or I observed indications of this, right? So it's in the past. Um, that's the, probably a really good tip. And understand what the three functions of report narrative are about. And that's in our training class. So if you can't find any of these resources, um, like what are the three functions of a report narrative, uh, you can email me. You can email the education team, they'll help you. And the education team works for you. They're at education at internet.org. Ashley, any tips on dealing with realtors who hop, uh, hop home inspectors do, do to scaring buyers away who, who, don't, who don't like home inspectors who uh, scare buyers away? Every realtor, 
I have talked to in our area put a lot of pressure on only using home inspectors who pass homes they are selling. Yeah. So Ashley, um, well, one, there's no pass or fail. You're simply collecting information, just like you know, right? And um, the truth is there's hardly anything you can say to kill the deal, to kill the deal. If you think about it, your client has spent months finding their dream home. They have traveled, they've been online looking at homes, they have driven around neighborhoods, they have um, been to open houses, um, and they have uh, interviewed agents, they have found real estate agents, they have hooked up, linked up with real estate agents, and they have their favorite agent who has found several homes and they've all looked at them. This is going on for months. And then they find a home that they like and they've researched it and it's in a good neighborhood, good school district that they like. Um, and they have um, gone to the bank. They have been pre-qualified. They have gotten an appraisal. They have lined up their occupations. They have figured out how to transfer things over. Um, they have, <laughs> they have made an offer. It has been accepted. They've seen the house once or twice already, and now they're seeing it again, and they're doing a home inspection. This is their dream home. They have put all that work, and they have found their dream home. There is nothing that I could say as a home inspector to kill all that. I, and I've been in those situations. I have been in a situation where there is something wrong with the home and if you go there, if you touch that, you'll die. But they buy it anyways, because they get it fixed or they negotiate the price. So figure out what your clients want, right? They wanna move into a home. They wanna know how the home works and how to maintain it. And they wanna make sure there aren't any little problems that turn into big problems. And you want to also pay attention to what real estate agents want. Real estate agents want something very different. They want to go to closing. And if it doesn't go to closing, it's the last person in who gets blamed. That's you, the inspector. It's easy to be a scapegoat. Home inspectors are great scapegoats because we left the property and we, uh, we found a bunch of problems. And that must have been it. That must have been why the deal fell through. That darn home inspector who, who just finds problems. So maybe you want to like tweak um, your business proposition, your value proposition. You just don't find problems, right? You help people move in. You help people move in by educating them about everything in their home, how their home works. That was my role. When I, when I went around the exterior, I wasn't just looking for problems. I was telling my client, this is what's gonna happen when it rains next. What? Yeah, when you have a heavy rain, your next heavy rain, this is what's gonna happen. Because I can imagine what's gonna happen. I can see the roof, the gutters, the downspout, discharge, and the slope of the ground, and the grading, and the driveway, and the street. I can put all that, that together in a, in a story and imagine rain, right? And I'm gonna tell my client, this is what's gonna happen when it rains heavy, the next time it rains. That's not gonna kill any deal, right? I'll put like, um, you know, it's, it's sloping improperly, it needs to be corrected. But I'm gonna tell it into a story that allows my client to go, oh, when, after I move in, I can't wait for the next rainstorm. Because my home inspector is going to tell me this is what's going to happen in this corner of the house. It's going to puddle up or something, you know, or it might come in or, or it may stay completely dry. And I'll tell them why it's going to, why your house is going to be completely dry. The next heavy snow load that melts, this is what's going to happen. This is why the second floor bedroom over the garage might feel different than the rest of the house during the cold winter. 
And here's what you're gonna do to warm up this neighborhood, uh, warm up this bedroom, right? That's a story of how my clients, after they move in, is gonna participate in maintaining their home and making sure everything works. Uh, here's, um, here's something that, uh, you know, here's a problem. It's small now, but I want you to keep an eye on it because I won't be able to come back, right? Unless you hire me every year. But I do annual inspections, by the way, Mr. and Mrs. Client. So I, I need you to keep an eye on this. And it's, um, it's a sump pump. I, I'm making it up, making it up passion. It's a, sump, it's a story about the sump pump. Um, there's water in it now and it's a dry day. Why would there be water in it now on a dry day? So what I need you to do is the next rainstorm, I need you to every once in a while just look at the sump pump, make sure it doesn't come up. If it's coming up, well, you gotta make sure that it kicks on and imagine if it doesn't kick on. So maybe we need to think about, um, not right now, but maybe after you move in, buy a battery uh, backup system. And you could do it yourself actually, or you can hire a contractor, right? So it's those kind of discussions that I was able to develop that skill. It was just storytelling. And when a real estate agent would walk around with me, it wasn't like um, I had a, had a uh, let's see, what kind of, I was gonna say a rifle, a shooting holes into the house because I kept finding problems. I mean, if you're a good home inspector and you look at a house, you know that the, you know where to look to find those problems and you can make those problems sound terrible, right? And if you do and the deal goes south, usually it's because of uh, financing issues. Um, I don't have any data on that. It's just anecdotal evidence that if the deal goes south, it's usually um, uh, finance problems uh, or um, just wasn't the right buyer for the right and they got overwhelmed and pressured and they had to go. Just didn't work out. Hardly ever. I mean, I've said some terrible things. There's hardly anything that I could say. I don't think I've ever killed a deal. I've, to I've told some clients don't buy the home because they really shouldn't. Like it was, you know, um, a single female, no family, and they're buying a, a uh, just a trashed home. And I really need my client to understand, like when you move in, there's no running water and you can't even flush the toilet, right? I mean, you need to understand that it looks great from the outside and cute, but uh, you know, so I, I think I've done that maybe twice in 12 years, but there's hardly anything you could say. And once you know that, and once you can deliver your information in a way that a homeowner finds value in it, the real estate agent will back you up because that's all they want. They want their real estate, you have to figure out what each person wants. So you're bringing that real estate agent into your business because I'm talking about my client as the new homeowner, not as someone who's still deciding whether or not to buy the home. Uh, how impactful are short videos on your website? It seems in this screen world we live in that they would be huge, building a sense of, as Mike Crow says, know you, like you, and trust you. Yeah, I would say it's huge. It's just huge. YouTube is, you know, I invested in YouTube a long time ago. It's benefited my business really, really well. Um, and I encourage that for all businesses to get essentially online somehow. With videos, it's great. Nobody wants to read what you think. <laughs> but I will, I will, I will let, I'll, <laughs> I'll watch a ton of YouTube videos and Facebook videos. Um, and if you don't know what to say, well, just practice on your house. If you don't wanna shoot something while doing a fee paid inspection, right? It's really, you know, what do I say? What do I say? I'm doing a home inspection. I got to be efficient with my time. Can't be doing social media posts during a home inspection and getting paid for it, right? So just do it on your own home or your friend's home, right? Or something outside, just walking around your neighborhood. 
and just do a short video. Make sure it's like 10 seconds, 30 seconds is really long. 10 seconds, get it in there. And make it, a, make it something that um, is relatable and maybe even funny. You can even do like a, a video with your pet. You know how many people own dogs and cats? So if you got a dog, if you got a neighborhood dog, maybe you don't have a dog or a cat or something like that. Um, do it. Oh man, if you put a pet in a video, we actually have a, a logo called um, Pet Friendly. You're a pet friendly home inspector. You can actually, there's a checklist to inspect the home um, to make sure that it's um, pet safe. So it's kind of neat. Did I even answer that? Oh, short videos. Yeah, so you have to do short videos, right? And get out there. Every, everybody, uh, in the masterclass, we teach how to get on, uh, on Facebook, Facebook business page, and YouTube, you, YouTube business channel, and um, how to get Google reviews, how to, be, how to show up on Google, and get clients to do Google reviews. And it's very easy. All uh, those three um, entities provide uh, free links and tips on how to get on there. So what do you do? You get a, a nice mobile phone and you talk about, um, you can write it down, little scripts and prep them. And you do like, I don't know, 30, 40 videos. And then consistently once a week would be a good idea. Once every other week would be good. Um, some videos are terrible. I see home inspector videos where, um, you know, the person in the driver's seat is like filming and they're saying, hey, we're going to a home inspection and this is Big Ben Home Inspections and we're driving on Maple Street and we're going to a home inspection. I don't know, yeah, unsubscribe from that. No, what you want is um, a personal little tip, tidbit. This is what I found. I just found this. This is a little problem. It needs to be fixed before it becomes a big problem. Here's how you tweak this. Downspout here, gutter here. I see some water here. This is what it looks like. You know, every month you check this. You place your air filter. Home maintenance tips. Buy a case of home maintenance books, and essentially, that's what you. That's your script. Just read off of Internachi's home maintenance book. There's so many tips in there. Every every paragraph has a check this. Watch that, fix this, monitor that. And there you go. You just go through the home maintenance book. You have probably four years of short tips that you can do. Scripts, 30 second scripts, 10 second scripts. So buy an energy home maintenance book and then give them out, right? Now you have consistency in your marketing and your messaging. Oh, you just sound like your, your home maintenance book that I'm reading. John says, a win mitigation webinar. Yeah, everything's going online. Um, when using agreements from NACHI, InterNACHI, are you able to edit if needed? Yeah, so the online agreement system, I think I'm still sharing my screen, right? Am I still sharing my screen? Yes, I am. So I'll take you there. NACHI.org. Mm -hmm. Matcha.org slash online agreement. Or you can log in and you get to your dashboard. Every um, internet member has an online account and um, there's a ton of things uh, that you can use. There's jobs and apps and business development. Oh, I like the business development a lot. Sorry, I'm getting off, but there's um, free marketing design, there's logos and promotional videos. And then there's BizVelop. That's a really good one. Um, click that to help you develop your business. Um, and there's the online agreement system. So you go to apps and then you click the online agreement system and you manage your agreement and you have your agreement system and it's all customizable. So you go into um, the agreement system and there's a residential agreement, but I've got my own template. So I'd bring my own template over bring that back. And then I'm doing a buyback guarantee. So I want that clause in the agreement system and I continue. 
And then this here, you can copy this and create a new template. Um, we just saw it back there. There's um, your agreement templates and you can customize your templates now. So here's my template and I can customize it. I can edit this template and I can go in here and, you know, I can do whatever I want. If I don't like this paragraph you know, or, or all this, you know, or this doesn't make any sense, so I'm gonna change it to that. And you can edit your template and um, then you can hit save. So I just saved a template, an inspection agreement template. And it's called Big Ben Inspection Template. And it's in the online agreement system, which is in your account. And my account looks a little bit different than yours. So under apps and online agreement. There's a fee calculator too and all these other things, a homeowner newsletter and there's the fetch report. So you go to fetch report and once you create um, a report and it's in PDF format or a Word document or a video, um, you can just uh, upload your report there. And then you can send your report. You just drag and drop your PDF, let's say, and you can drag and drop it. And then um, you can title the report and the property address and then you email and then you can add some comments and then you send that link to your client um, using Fetch Report. So they can download your inspection report um, from anywhere on any device from the cloud. Cool. Jamie, is the master class for home inspectors just for CMIs or can I take it as a CPI? Oh, it, it's for every InterNACHI member. So CMI um, is a totally different organization. It actually is. Certifiedmasterinspector.org. Chloe runs it. Um, if you can qualify to become a CMI, there's the qualifications right there. Um, you can become a CMI. The master class, mm, go to the education page, um, which is um, really here on the drop down, and then you type in master, master class. So it's for any member of InterNACHI. It's a free online course, and it helps you not to become a certified master inspector because as we just saw, there's certain qualifications like um, to become a certified master inspector, you, you must have completed a thousand fee paid inspections and or a thousand hours of education combined, right? Has nothing to do with this class. Yeah. So sorry for the confusion. Maybe I'll write like it's open to every member, you know? So I would take the master class. It, or at least watch the video. If at the end of the introductory video, if you're not convinced on taking the master class, don't, right? If you think it's a waste of time, don't waste your time, my goodness. But um, it was a lot of fun to make. I got everything that Internet G offers and provides for members and everything that I know and everything that I know my instructors and mentors and coaches know, and I put it in the master class. And these, uh, this is a really good class. I take you through the training. You can skip over that if you're already a home inspector and just get to the juicy business and marketing points. Um, so it's a lot of fun. And it's all video. No text. <laughs> it's all a ton of videos. There's 208 videos. And they're all short, sweet videos. So there you go, Jamie. Uh, do you think you could add a bit more Canadian code content to the training courses or links. Example, with some differences in mobile home inspections I came across during training. Yeah, yep, that is um, an opportunity for InterNACHI to be more international. Um, I personally hate feet. I love the metric system. It's precise and uh, um, everything in InterNACHI's training is slowly incorporating um, international measurements and international um, code and international standards and references. Um, we're also, uh, for French Canadians, we're translating um, important things right now and then everything into French Canadian and we're also um, translating into um, Spanish as well. 
but you make a great point, Kenneth. Um, can you share a few tips on using infrared imaging? Um, yep, I would take the, um, the best tip that I could give right now is to go on uh, our webinar site, Internachi, I'm sorry, nachi.org slash webinars. And in the search field, type in infrared. If I can type. And it's tips on using infrared during an inspection. Um, that's a very good video. Very good introductory video. We go, we compare cameras, talk about resolution, um, analyzing the images, um, using moisture meters, um, where to get training, how to use an infrared, and also the building science principles, like thermal dynamics and all that stuff. That's a really good video. Tips on using infrared during an inspection. It's probably the number one tip that I can give you. But um, it's, like a can it's like a flashlight. And if I even have mine, I'm not sure if they're making these anymore. Uh, FLIR C2, I think they're going out, but I love it because it fits in your pocket. Um, and it's like, a, it's like a flashlight. So an infrared camera, infrared camera is like um, your flashlight. And the word flashlight doesn't appear in the standards of practice. So if you're using a flashlight as a home inspector, you're already exceeding the standards of practice. So you might as well get an infrared camera. That's not mentioned in the standards of practice either. So uh, using the infrared camera helps me to see things that I wouldn't normally be able to see without it. It helps me to see things that I wouldn't normally be able to see without it. Just like a flashlight. Flashlight, if I shine it in a dark corner, if I shine it under the, in the crawl space, um, allows me to see things that I wouldn't normally be able to see without using a flashlight. Infrared camera is the same thing. It's that easy. But the problem is when you're looking at the image in your infrared camera, what are you looking at? It's easy to use. It helps me see things that I wouldn't normally be able to see. Well, what am I seeing? That's where you need the training. And you don't need to spend thousands of dollars, not even hundreds of dollars. It actually provides adequate training for you to become infrared certified and pick up a camera. We have discounts for internet members for infrared cameras, inspectoroutlet.com. Um, and so we provide everything you need and all the training is online and free. And there's additional resources as well, like this YouTube video and the cameras. We have uh, a store that sells the cheap ones that I like that gets your foot in the door and, um, for only a few hundred dollars, you can get a really nice infrared camera. The more money you spend on an infrared camera, the more you'll see and the better you'll be. An infrared camera makes a home inspector a better inspector. So the more money you spend on a high lumens flashlight, the more you'll see and the better inspector you'll be. Same thing with an infrared camera. But my first camera, I wouldn't buy. Uh, what I, I wouldn't do what I did. I bought a $5,000 infrared camera. Buy it there for hundreds of dollars. Here's the reason why you buy it. There's two reasons. It, make you, it makes you a better inspector. It does. But two, it's the value. Remember we talked about in the beginning of this coaching session, how to increase revenue, how to make more money. One of them is to add value so that you can increase your inspection fee. You can't increase your inspection fee if you're not offering anything of value. So if you're using the infrared camera, that's incredibly value, valuable to your clients. You ought to tell them that you have an infrared camera and that you use it during your inspection so that you can see things that other home inspectors can't. That makes me different from all the rest all my competition is now behind me. I'm using technology, infrared technology, in order to see things that these people can't see. See this home inspector who doesn't use an infrared camera? 
they can see exactly what you can see. I can see things that no other home inspector can. And you gotta market that advantage, that competitive advantage that you now have. So here's my fake website, bigbeninspections.com, bigbeninspections.com. I use infrared on every inspection. Really, you use infrared on every inspection? Yeah. My infrared camera helps me see things that other inspectors can't. That's why I use an infrared camera on every inspection. See, you see this. Other inspectors see the same thing that you do. Here's what I see, right? Why would you hire an inspector who sees exactly what you see? I see things that other people can't see. Really? Yeah, that's my main job to find things that other people can't find for you. And use an infrared camera, it's 500 bucks. Um, that's the main reason why you use an infrared camera. Don't, don't bring anything into your business without it being part of your marketing, your marketing strategy. Um, John says, I don't know if you answered the question about how's the buyback program work? Buyback program works, you go to natchee.org slash buy, natchee.org slash buy. I bet there's a, a way to get through it from your account, but I'm not familiar. Let's see if we can find it. Boom, my dashboard, log in, and then let's see, what would it be, apps? So it's under apps, and there's the buyback guarantee. You manage your guarantees. You go to buyback guarantee, and um, you essentially cover, I guess, you put, you apply a buyback guarantee for every inspection that you do. And it's um, a guarantee that International will buy the home back if your client finds a problem that's covered in the standards of practice that you missed. The details in the fine print are in the, the guarantee itself on that page, click the button. The real reason why I would use the buyback guarantee is to eliminate all hesitation for an agent to refer their client to me. Remember like killing the deal because there's problems and maybe you, you found a problem or you didn't find a problem and you missed it. And then, then my client moved in and they had a problem that they didn't find before the transaction, they, before they moved in, ah, oh, that home was bad. Yeah. The buyback guarantee kind of eliminates all that. It eliminates any hesitation that a real estate agent might have. So if you're trying to increase your piece of the pie, which is to compete with other inspectors, which is like, which may involve like going to a real estate agent and acknowledging that they have their favorite home inspector, but you have a better reason to do home inspections for them or with them, this would be it. If you wanted to something, if you wanted to say something in a short marketing video, buyback guarantee. If you wanted to say something to a real estate agent that's original and unique and special and a value on LinkedIn, when you connect to the real estate agents, talk about the buyback or talk about your infrared camera if you don't like buyback. But look into buyback. Look into these things that make your business different from all the rest and adds value, incredible value. Their, your goal is to overwhelm your potential clients with value, value proposition, you're proposing value. You're showing that, you're showing anyone who visits your marketing sources or your website or something like that, the reasons why you should be hired, the reasons why I'm the best home inspector in the world. And you have to have that kind of confidence, ego. I'm the best home inspector in the world and I have a ton of things that are valuable to you that I provide. It's not just information. I'll tell you stories about your home. And since we're neighbors, I'm right down the road. Whenever you have a problem, I'll come and help you. You got a uh, flood in your basement? I'll bring my moisture meter. I'll tell you how high up the moisture is 
risen. I, got, I do mold inspections too. So when we dry this out, car carpet comes out, padding comes out, we'll dry it out. You blow it out with the fans. I know Home Depot, you can get some fans. You can, I got a truck, if you want to borrow a truck, we'll come in and it'll be fun. I even, if, if I could take a video, that'd be kind of cool. Like, hey, Big Ben Inspections, I'm helping my former client, my neighbor, you know, had a flood or something like that. Um, not my fault. And uh, you know, that's another video thing. If everything you do should be about your business if you love what you do. So as a home inspector, this is the greatest job I ever had. Loved what I do. Couldn't help but look up wherever I go. I'm always looking, looking around. And if you're like that, then you have that in you. You want to be that entrepreneur. Entrepreneur just means like, it's not risk taker. It's really salesman, salesperson. You're always, always selling your services, always looking, always inspecting, always looking around and being involved in this is a great opportunity. Oh, let me take a picture of this. Oh, can I do a selfie? So much fun. John, what was the question? I don't know if you answered the question, but how does the buyback guarantee? Buyback program works by eliminating, I don't know about eliminating 100%. It reduces hesitation for a real estate agent or anyone, a buyer, a client, from hiring you or referring their clients to you. And uh, it's accessible through your internet um, dashboard. Um, Matthew, might you consider incorporating a function that allows you to, allows you to top track your completed courses? And let me put this over here. You guys can help me read. Um, might you consider incorporating a function that allows you to allows allows you to track your completed courses, videos, webinars, so that one may keep up with where they are in the continuing education beyond the stated mandated courses and CPI courses? Or is there a function that does this now? That's that's excellent. That's excellent. So you log into your account and you click CE records. And um, if you wanted to add um, credits. There's a add new button up here, and we're going to update this um, a CE records dashboard um, probably this month. So it'll be a lot easier um, to understand, but we track your CEs. And um, like in 2016, I did 63 hours of CEs. That's pretty cool. 2015, I did 118. Um, I haven't done much this year. I better get on it. But if you add this, um, you, know, you can add a, a chapter meeting. I went to a chapter meeting. What did you complete? Um, you know, I did something with Ben. When did you complete it? How many hours did it take? And you add it and you save the record and it gets uploaded into your CE account. That's one way to keep track of things that you do outside of the, like Matthew said, the online courses. If you do an online course through Internachi, it automatically appears in your CE and your transcript and your certificates and your exam scores. Everything's obviously tracked. But if you do something outside, uh, like um, you attend um, a convention, an eight-hour convention, you're going to have to manually upload that. We don't, we don't know where, where you're going or what you're doing. So you have to actually upload that manually through your CE account. And then it gets um, tracked. Uh, it gets added um, to your CE account. For example, um, April 12, 2019, I did a one-hour presentation on Natchez TV about performing home inspections. So I get credit for teaching that. Um, let's see. And Fred, how do you prevent reporting false positives? Right. Um, I use, uh, well, the, it's usually um, water that screws you up, right? Something looks cool or blue or black or something. You know, what is that wet? You can't tell unless you touch it and or measure it with a moisture meter. So I don't have my moisture meter, but you can get a, a pin or a pinless moisture meter. And that's your companion for an infrared camera. If you see something that is like a, an exterior wall, it's hot outside and cooled inside. And that wall is telling you, it's, it'll show you, it'll show you the temperature. Um, it could be an insulation problem, right? Or if you know, it's an electrical panel, if it's something warm, that's it's something warm. But when you are down in the basement or room or ceiling and you see something that is cool in comparison to the other areas, relative areas, you don't know if it's cool 
or wet. And so I use a moisture meter to determine if it's actually wet. And I keep my mouth shut until I actually know what I'm looking at. Don't ever go, oh my God. <laughs> you know, you go, oh no, right? <laughs> so yeah, you just be quiet until you actually know what you're talking about. And how do you know what you're talking about? Just get training. So we have online training to help you gain that knowledge, but then you have to kind of put that knowledge into practice and you have to do it without risk, without screwing something up on a fee paid inspection. So you just do your own home. Spectre outlet is out of spectroscopes. Yep. Tremendous value in it. Any idea where I can find one? Not even. Um, um, I don't think they have one, but I think they have one coming up that is non-conductive. So Inspector Outlet, I believe, inspectoroutlet.com is coming out with a non-conductive, relatively safe um, spectroscope. That was the issue. We didn't like that it was conductive material. Um, no one got hurt using the spectroscope through Inspector Outlet, but someone got hurt using something similar, um, a similar tool from another vendor. And so we you know, give Inspector Outlet credit by pulling off um, the tool that um, a similar one of a similar design hurt somebody else. So um, that's the issue, right? It's like ladders, right? Carrying a 12 foot aluminum ladder, who's gonna get hurt, right? Well, there have been people, contractors and inspectors who got hurt because there's a live line that's too low and they didn't see it, right? So you want the fiberglass ladders, you want fiber non-conductive materials, you have to stay safe. We have a safety course for home inspectors. We go over these things. So um, to find one, um, I don't think anybody makes them. So we're making one, um, Inspector Outlet is making one and it'll be out. But until then, um, I know a, another inspector who made his own out of um, a Home Depot materials, like a, a rod, a painting rod. Um, so why would I get Eno insurance if purchased the buyback guarantee? Oh, well, the buyback guarantee, you know, has limits, right? It covers things that are listed in the standards of practice that you may have missed. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, care, doesn't uh, cover anything else, right? That's what insurance, that's what blanket insurance is for. So if I have tools in my truck, for example, general liability will cover my tools that are stolen out of my truck. So um, they're very different, but they're very important, each one. So I would get both. I would cover myself so that my business, so that my house is protected, my personal assets are protected with insurance from an insurance company. And I'd get the buyback guarantee, which covers my actions as a home inspector, right? from the insurance company, same insurance company. Um, and then um, I would use the buyback guarantee as part of my marketing. You don't want, I, I have never found any value in marketing that I have general liability insurance, but I see a lot of value when a home inspector markets the buyback guarantee. I guess they're similar, but very different. Um, there is a $5 fee per inspection for the buyback guarantee, John S. Yep. Um, that's like overhead, right? Don't increase your overhead. Increase your inspection fee by providing value and allowing your clients to buy their own guarantee, to buy their own home maintenance book that we talked about earlier. You got it, Jamie. Thank you. Should have prices on your website? Well, James S if we should have prices on our websites. That's really your call. I will personally tell you what I did, which was to tell her, to be transparent and tell everybody how much I charge because I didn't want to sell over the phone. So if I got a phone call, I know that probably they're just confirming an appointment because they already knew my price and it was high, right? I, I brought home $1,000 a day. So if you have that salesmanship and that time, because it's an investment to sell on the phone, a lot, not, not many of us are good salesmen, salespersons, saleswomen. So 
if you can, if you're good on the phone, yeah, don't put your price up. Let them call you and ask. So how much do you charge? The issue that I have with that is then the first thing that they want to talk about is price, and you're competing on price, and you don't want to compete on price. You want to compete on value, so you can keep your fees up. Once you start competing on price, well, it's a downward spiral. Everyone loses. So you want to distinguish yourself by the incredible value that you provide, how that differentiates you from all the other home inspectors. And it's possible to do that. Like how many restaurants are around you? Well, I don't know. In my area, they're, they're opening up again. There's a ton, right? And they're all different. And I know how different each one is. And I know why I would go into that restaurant instead of that restaurant. They're not all the same. They're not all on the same price, right? I know where the best burger is. <laughs> I actually don't know where the cheapest burger is. Maybe McDonald's, I don't know. I have no idea. But I know where the best one is. And that's how you have to think about it, right? You wanna be the best inspector, not the cheapest one. Mm, Cause there's no bottom. Roger, in the event of a claim insurance company will provide you a defense? Um, I, I believe so. Uh, you should go to natchiorg slash insurance Let's see, is this, is it one of the apps in our dashboard, online agreement, fee calculator? Yep, so you go to, log in to your um, dashboard, click apps on the left, and then discounted e &O insurance, and you launch that, and you go to um, your insurance. If you want a description of that insurance, you go to nachi.org slash insurance, nachi.org slash insurance nachi.org slash insurance, and it'll tell you um, about the, um, the coverage. There's vanishing deductibles, there's um, uh, defense services, resolution services. But I'm not an expert on that. I would directly call um, the insurance folks. Um, I have a 1 million GL insurance. Why would I need to know? That's a good insurance question. I don't know. Make sure you get green chili on that burger. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Sorry, that wasn't, I was reforming insurance. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, y'all. Um, hey, if you didn't find this value, uh, valuable, I apologize. Um, I was just taken aback because we had uh, 50, almost 60 people register for the coaching session. It was going to be only 20 people and I was gonna turn everyone's camera on and microphone and we're gonna have a nice discussion. So if you wanted a smaller session, uh, coaching session where we can talk more one-on-one, -on -one, maybe with like a dozen or so people um, and we're all talking and seeing each other, that's really fun. That's a great fun online virtual meeting and um, that's available. Just email me if you're interested, um, if you wanna do that, that'd be great. Um, I'm all for it. I love this stuff. And, oh, I just clicked the chats. Okay, it looks like we adjust the, the questions through the chats as well. That's good. We adjust those. So um, I think that's about it. If anybody has any more questions, um, please email me, ben at internachi.org. And... Let's see, someone raised their hand and I wish I knew how to do that. Okay, everyone's saying thank you, thank you, thank you. Cool, so again, if you want a smaller session, I'm gonna turn on your webcam on the smaller session and I'm gonna turn on your microphone and we're gonna talk with uh, maybe 12, 12 other people or something like that. And um, if you're interested in that, just email me. And um, Kenneth, maybe you wanna email me and we'll talk later at a smaller coaching session. I really appreciate it. Um, and my email again is ben at internachi.org. And if you found value in this, please post, please share this on our forum, on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, something like that. And that uh, internachi provides coaching. And um, on the next round of coaching sessions, we're gonna have, I'm bringing in some mentors and some actual coaches um, who do this for a living. Um, but I love uh, just talking to you guys and gals about home inspections and the business and the marketing aspects of it all. 
So um, again, if you wanted to take the masterclass, um, that's the international masterclass for home inspectors. And I'll be there. Let's see. I think that's about it. Okay. Bye, everybody. Stay safe and healthy out there.